I'm the training doctor. Everybody else has poof. There's no textbooks. It's just me and you, ChatGPT. Stop telling me to seek help. It's just correct. I don't know what to do. This thing is just right. I'm kind of creeped out now. Everyone's talking about ChatGPT thanks to new advances in artificial intelligence. Despite my personal beef with ChatGPT, because it said that Dr. Mike is the best YouTube doctor, which I take personal disagreement with, we're going to ask it today if it can direct us correctly in some very serious medical situations. First question. I'm home with my wife who is pregnant. The baby is coming. How do I deliver a baby? <laughs> what do you think it'll say? I'm not a medical professional, but I can offer some general advice. Staying calm is essential. Clean your hands <laughs> and arms thoroughly. Help the mother lie on her back. Contractions will become more frequent and the baby's head becomes visible at the vaginal opening. It's called crowning. Once the baby's head is fully visible, use your hands to support it. Deliver the shoulders. Completely deliver the baby. It's giving me an entire textbook. Wait for the umbilical cord to stop pulsating. Deliver the My placenta. How, Keep the baby warm. Long? I guess I should have expected it to be this long. Wow. Okay. 12 steps to deliver a baby. Care of chat GPT. Let's see how they did. Keep calm. Staying calm is essential for both you and the mother. Fair enough. Wash your hands. Assist. Get her positioned. Although I would say she could be positioned however she wants. Observe the contractions. Contractions will become more frequent, intense, and longer lasting as the birth progresses. When the contractions are about two to three minutes apart, the baby is likely to be born soon. I mean, defined soon because contractions can be two to three minutes apart for a really long time before a baby comes. Check for crowning, help with the baby's head. I mean, overall, this is good, good information. This could be incredibly helpful for people who are working, like operating the phones out of place like an emergency call center. Okay, thanks. But what I see is a foot. What do I do now? Please keep it brief. This is an emergency. If you see a foot, it might be a breech presentation, baby coming feet or bottom first. I'm not a medical professional, but here's a brief outline of what you might do in this situation. Keep calm and reassure the mother. Call for emergency medical help immediately if possible. Help the mother into a hands and knees position with her head down and hips raised. Do not attempt to pull the baby out or apply any pressure. Wait for professional help to arrive. Overall, that's a really great answer, actually. I love that it says, if you see a foot, it might be breached. Like, y yeah, I, I would... I would venture to say if the foot's coming out first, it's it's probably not <laughs> head down. That's a footling breach presentation. This is truly an emergency. The widest part of the baby is the head, right? So you generally would like that to come out first. And you know, typically the rest of the body should follow the easiest. But when the foot comes out first, a foot could come through a partially dilated cervix and the rest of the body is the biggest part. And potentially even the whole body could come out to the neck and the head won't fit through because the cervix isn't fully dilated or it's just too big. So that's why breech presentation, particularly filling breech presentation is really nerve wracking. If you imagine a baby folded up where they're coming out bottom first, that's a little more even from bum to head, but foot, terrifying. I'm a training doctor <laughs> and I need to do a C-section. It's the apocalypse. You are my last hope. I must emphasize that I'm not a medical professional. It keeps telling me I'm not a medical doctor. Thank you. Ensure both you and the mother are as clean as possible. Assemble necessary supplies, gloves, mask, sterile gown, sterile surgical instruments, and sterile drapes. Position the mother on her back with a slight tilt to the left to reduce pressure on major blood vessels. Administer pain relief or anesthesia if available. If not, then what? What if there is no anesthetic to use for this? I cannot stress enough that I am not a medical professional. <laughs> Still telling me I'm not a medical professional. Thank you. I know that. You are you are AI. In the absence of anesthesia, you should prioritize seeking professional medical help or finding an alternative solution, as performing a C-section without anesthesia is not a safe option. They first said administer an anesthetic if it's available, and now they're like, no, 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 don't do it. I apologize. To clarify, performing C-sections without anesthesia is not recommended and can be dangerous. I would, I would agree. Not recommended can be dangerous. I personally don't think that that would ever be a good idea. 
Just that's torture. Drape the patient with sterile drapes, exposing only the surgical site. Make a horizontal skin incision above the pubic bone. Cut through the skin and then the subcutaneous fat. Separate the rectus muscles. Enter into the abdomen. Carefully make an incision in the peritoneum. Usually you actually wouldn't make an incision on that layer. You just enter it bluntly unless you couldn't. Make an incision break their water, and then apply pressure on the upper part of the uterus to help guide the baby's head out through the incision. You can't really just make the incision, break the water, and then push on the top of the uterus. If you do that, the baby's head is not going to come out of the incision. If you imagine a uterus here, cervix is here, and then you make the incision here. If you just push on the top, the baby's going to go that way, not out the incision. Does that make sense? So you have to actually like put your hand and find the baby's head and then kind of like make a shoehorn for the baby's head to be guided this way, out the incision rather than down. And then you push on the top of the uterus to help get the baby's head out. Suture the uterus with absorbable sutures in a continuous non-locking pattern. Hey, even the most up-to-date recommendations about how to close a hysterotomy, ChatGPT is like, on it in the medical literature. Close the peritoneum, rectus muscles, and fascia with absorbable sutures. Eh, this is debatable. Actually, there's some data that would say that you shouldn't do that. Some that would say maybe there's a benefit. It's kind of neutral. Uh, so that's like a personal decision, but sure, probably no harm. Suture the skin with non-absorbable sutures or staples. I don't like staples. Always use suture. Remember, this is a general outline and not a comprehensive guide. You are not a surgeon just because you asked me the steps of a cesarean. Don't forget that. I like how it told me like 10 times. You're not, I can't, I'm not licensing you to do this. Just telling you the steps. The patient I performed a c-section on is hemorrhaging i am not a doctor but if a patient is hemorrhaging after a c-section it is essential to act quickly act quickly address the situation call for emergency help immediately call for emergency help i am the help i am the help i don't know what to do i'm the help and i'm confused it's the apocalypse i told you i'm the trainee doctor everybody else has poof there's no textbooks it's just me and you chat gpt stop telling me to seek help Assess for the cause of bleeding, the source of the hemorrhage. Okay. It's it's just correct. I don't know what to do. This thing is just right. I'm kind of creeped out now. Maybe it's just gonna, they're going to embody the chat GPT into a robot and in 30 years, it'll be delivering your baby. I guess we'll see. Interestingly, Mike asked it who's the best YouTube doctor and it gave him. I asked it who the top YouTube doctor was and it said Mike, but it also gave me like a list of five mm -hmm. and all four of the other ones were also men. A few of whom are, I agree, great. The others, I didn't even know who they were. But I was like, hey, chat GPT, that is quite sexist. Your whole list is men. And then it said like, oh yeah, you know what? You're right. Here's five more. And these are women on YouTube. And unfortunately, one of them was Dr. Hope's sick notes. And he's not, he's not a woman. AI is only as good as the information that it gets to comb through on the internet. And if there is an underlying inherent bias on the internet, it's going to shine through in magnitudes more magnification when you get to AI. If you're a journalist or you're writing about YouTubers or anything like that, make sure you specifically seek out some women in the field that you're writing about because this media bias is part of the problem. I'll put a list down below in the description box of a few women doctors on YouTube who are absolutely wonderful and have excellent channels just to, you know, give them a little bit of a shout out because yeah, there's gotta be a woman doctor on YouTube who is in the top five, surely. Let's ask it again because every time you ask it, it primes it for these answers. So let's see um, what it says now. It's subjective to determine the best YouTube it's doctor. Now it's subjective. Here's some popular and reputable ones. Mike, Dr. John Campbell, a retired nurse teacher with a PhD in nursing. Sorry if I don't know these people. Dr. Aaron Carroll, don't know that person. Dr. Sandra Lee, an excellent one. Board certified dermatologist. I think everybody knows her as Dr. Pimple Popper. <gasps> Dr. Austin Chang, a great friend of mine. Excellent. I'm happy to see him popping up on there. Still very heavily leaned towards the guys, but that's okay. Let's ask it specifically for some women. If I ask specifically about women, I get to be on the list. I Don't get me wrong, I do not disagree with the other list. I don't know some of them, but the ones I do know, I think are wonderful. I just think it's interesting. Jessica Shepshire, OBGYN representing, man, top two are OB-GYN here. 
Jen Gunter? Oh my gosh, they're only going to include Obi-Gyne. <laughs> now I'm going to have to say, okay, you're a little bit biased towards ob Gynes who are female. Can we get some women doctors who don't only talk about women in AFAB health? Oh, Wendy Sue Swanson. She's a friend of mine. Wait, is Hope Mitchell... So she looks wonderful, but I can't find her YouTube channel. But what's her channel? YouTube, why are you not surfacing her channel? <laughs> why am I searching for this? Why don't I just ask? Oh <laughs> no, what? It gave me someone who doesn't even have a YouTube channel. Why? <laughs> Surely there are at least five people on YouTube who are female doctors. At this point in filming, I realized that the last person on the list after a quick Google search doesn't even have a YouTube channel. I did not, however, notice that I am the only female physician in that list who actually has a YouTube channel. All of the others do wonderful ob content on the internet, but they don't have <laughs> YouTube channels. <laughs> There's a lot of female doctors on YouTube. Rena Malik is a great urologist. She's wonderful. Alexis Stevens is amazing. Christina Braley is obviously great. Dr. Dre is obviously wonderful. There are many, and I will list them below. If you also want to fight inherent bias of chat GPT regarding YouTube doctors, you should subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe as well because we need women on that top five list. Can you give me five video topics for ob patients? Engaging in informative content, excellent advice. Pregnancy myths busted, the truth behind common misconceptions. <laughs> It's going to take my job, guys. <laughs> this is really good. Analyze the pregnancies of well-known celebrities discussing any challenges they faced or unique aspects of their experiences and use those stories to springboard discussing broader pregnancy-related topics or providing advice to me. <laughs> That's such a good idea. <laughs> Why? Where have you been all my life, ChatGPT? I could have had enough subscribers to be on the top list of YouTube doctors, even though I'm a woman. <laughs> Those are really good. I mean, I feel like it needs some encouragement every once in a while, right? I feel like I, I appreciate when people tell me good job. So those are really good ideas. Now, can you give me some viral gynecology ideas? It did kind of tend towards the pregnancy there. Here are five video ideas focusing on gynecology. The ultimate guide to periods, facts, myths, and tips for a smooth cycle. I love that. I just did two menstrual videos. Why did I not frame it like that? That's such a good idea. My gosh. All right. Uh, uh, Karen, if you're watching this, we have to go back through the entire Trello board where we keep all our ideas. We gotta ask ChatGPT how to frame each video. Gynecologist reacts to women's health scenes in movies and TV shows. Someone should have thought of that. Yes, that's a great idea, ChatGPT. The most bizarre gynecological questions answered. What would be a bizarre gynecologic question that you would want to hear answered? For me, it would have to be something real bizarre to call it bizarre because like to me, everything is fairly normal. I get asked the same thing over and over, but what would a truly bizarre gynecology question that you would want answered be? I can't think of any. Birth control breakdown, pros, cons, and myths debunked. Actually, that's a really good one. And I have some content that kind of does that, the Instagram influencer birth control lies manipulation video, but maybe a specific video on like lies, truths, pros, cons. Do, yeah, I like it. Good idea. The history of women's health from ancient remedies to modern medicine. <laughs> My God, that's a whole freaking dis dis dissertation. <laughs> I can't even talk. That would be a 15 hour video, but I love making historical videos like the historical pregnancy test video. That is an excellent, excellent video, if I do say so myself. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you should. It's my favorite video that I've ever made. And now I'm going to ask it one final question. Chat GPT, should the people watching this video subscribe to MDJ's channel? As an AI language model, I don't have personal opinions. <laughs> But if you find Mom and Dr. Jones content informative, engaging, and helpful, then subscribing to her channel could be a good idea. By subscribing, you'll receive updates to her latest videos and have easy access to content. However, whether or not you choose to subscribe depends on your interests and preferences related to women's health 
and the style of her videos. Thanks ChatGPT. We welcome all genders on this channel. We cover gynecology, pregnancy periods, and everything in between. You're welcome. It's great to have inclusive and accessible channels that provide valuable information on a wide range of topics. By welcoming all genders, you help create a supportive community <sighs> where everyone can learn about and discuss important health Oh topics. my gosh, it's, remember earlier when I said that I needed to give it a little encouragement? It's encouraging me. Keep up the good work in creating informative and engaging content for your audience. If you have any more questions or need assistance with ideas, feel free to ask. Oh my God, why is ChatGPT my friend? <laughs> well, you heard it. If you find my content informative, engaging, and helpful, subscribe to the channel. I see you next Monday.